Hey everyone and welcome to the Krusty Krab. In today's video we're going to be working on the card component in Material UI. Now the card component is pretty interesting. You can do a lot of different things with it and it really is sort of like a build your own adventure when it comes to this component. There are a lot of different components that are within the card component that you can use to customize a card in however you'd like. And if you find value in this video don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you leave a comment. It helps so much with the YouTube algorithm. Let's jump straight into to the component. Now, the first example they have of a basic card on their um, on their documentation, we're going to go through that really quick. So as you can see, the general layout with any card is the first thing you're going to do is you're going to wrap everything in the card component. This card component sort of acts as a paper on the background of the actual card and everything else will be wrapped within this card component. There are a couple of different props you can pass into it. One of the most common ones you'd probably use is this outline prop. So for example, if you set the, um, sorry, the variant prop that you can pass outlined into, if you set the variant prop to outline, you can see that the card just becomes sort of outlined with a nice little one pixel uh, wide sort of rounded uh, gray border, at least in dark mode of material UI. Now, from that point on, you can see that there are a couple of different things that we have in this card. For example, we have a little title with some act, uh, with some content inside of here, and then at the bottom we have a little button area. Now, this area is known as the card content, and this area down here is known as the card actions component. Now, you can also, if you scroll down a bit before we get there, have a card header component, and we'll talk about that in just a sec. So you can see here, the first thing they do is they open open up their card content, they pretty much put that little word of the day header over there and they just make the um, actual font size a bit smaller to make it look a bit more like a header and you can see that it's pretty much just a regular div that they've put a bunch of typographies into so there's nothing too special. After they end the card content, all they do is they create a card action component and inside of that they pass in the learn more button as a child. And that's pretty much one of the simplest examples you can have as a card. As you can see, you're going to have the card at the top level, then anything you want in the card, whether it be content, a header, card actions, and even more, which we're about to see, you nest that within the card component. So let's move on to a more complex example. Now this example is probably one of the most complex. You have a little button here that you could eventually maybe even have a little drop down menu you have a avatar as well as a title you have an image in the middle you have some content then you have a little action area where you have a chevron that if you click will actually expand more information down now let's see how it was made First of all, you can see within the card component, they declare the card header. Now, a lot of these components like the header that nest inside of a card, you can straight up pass whatever you want inside of the props for it. So for example, instead of having children in this component, they have actual props for the avatar, the action, the title, and the subtitle. So you can see the avatar, they pretty much have a, a material UI avatar component, which is pretty much sort of just like an image uh, with a, um, that is sort of styled in the material UI way, so it'll crop it to show a circle. For example, in this case, they only pass a um, letter, and that letter will sort of be cropped in a way uh, that it becomes like sort of a profile picture, and sort of looks like Google Plus, if you guys were around when Google Plus was, um, this is sort of what their profile pictures look like, and it makes sense because Google and material UI are very heavily intertwined. Um, it's actually based off of it. So using the avatar component, you can have a little avatar. You can either make this an image or text uh, following the avatar um, uh, documentation. Now the next thing is an action. And inside of the action, you can see, let's just make this a bit bigger. Inside of the action, you see it's an icon wrapped in an icon button. And if you're not too familiar with icons and icon buttons, I have another video on that. But essentially the icon itself are these three little dots and the icon button makes it so that when you are around the icon and when you click on it, it has that little ripple effect. So under the action um, prop of the card header, it will uh, add something to the far right of it, whereas the avatar will add the avatar to the far left. And then, of course, as you can guess, the title and uh, subheader 
um, components are just going to be this text up here and then the subheader obviously is this text down here and that covers the card header the next thing we have is card media generally you can put the card media in whatever order you want for example if you wanted the card media to be above the card header I believe if you just went and switched around the order of this com uh, these components um, they would sort of build in a different way so the card header would be uh, at below the card media if that's something you wanted and that's why it sort of really is like sort of a build your own adventure type of uh, adventure with this so of course the card media you're pro just going to pass um, a prop into the um, uh, wherever your image is, whether it's a source, um, you can pass a height and an alt, of course. Now this component prop, normally, I believe by default, the component prop is going to be a div, but they do make a little note here that a lot of the times, um, it, for a lot of images, you might not get the proper responsiveness uh, that you want if you pass in div as a component. So if you're using an image as card media, you're probably going to want to just uh, uh, pass in the component image. And of course, if you have something like a video or an iframe, you might want to switch it up depending on what you're using uh, for that component prop. All that component prop does is it uh, it gives it tells Matoyi why what you want the default prop to be, uh, what you want the default sort of container um, div to be uh, when you're passing in that image. And if you pass in an image, then if you were to look at this in inspect. Um, you would see that it's actually wrapped around an image tag instead of a div and then an image inside of it. Um, and that's all that means. If you didn't pass that component uh, in, this would be an image wrapped inside of a div, which might mess some things up depending on what type of media you are using and what browser the user is on. And finally, you have the card content, which we talked about. However, um, actually, finally, sorry, we have the card actions. Uh, the card content is just some typography. Now, in the card action, we have two little icons here that you can see, one icon and another icon. And then we pass in an expand more. And this expand more uh, component is actually... Um, something custom uh, that they have uh, imported from Mitoi UI. It's just an icon. And within this, uh, whoops, um, within uh, this expand more, sorry, it is a component in, with the expand more icon inside of it. Within this, what they're allowing it to do is they just have a state variable that when you click this expand more icon, it pretty much just sets expanded to true. And if we scroll down, you can see that the expanded uh, uh, the expand is outside of the card actions, but we have a collapse. And collapse and expand more are generally just Matoi UI components that you can actually use in multiple places. And there are some other components like the accordion uh, that use this internally. But for our purposes, these two components work specifically well with cards. And you can see that outside of the card actions, they have a little collapse component. And that collapse ha component has a prop called in. And whenever expanded is true, that in component is going to be that in prop is going to be true and you will see that uh, it will go ahead and display all of this within the actual card component itself and that's why it's still nested within the card component but not the card actions you can also pass in things like a timeout and what you want to do when the uh, unmount happens of that expand so for example you probably want to set un, uh, um, expand to false um, when it unmounts on timeout or by any other user interaction and then they actually just wrap some card content inside of it just to make sure that the padding and everything is congruent with the card content above here if you didn't pass the card content the padding might not be uh uh, proper and the typography, the default typography and stuff might also uh, be a bit off. Um, things might go specifically to the edge because in essence, the card component is just a big sort of paper that wraps everything else inside of it. And if you didn't pass in, like for example, if you just pass in a typography that's not wrapped in the card content, it might not have the, the proper spacing, which is why they made the card content component in the first place. And that really is one of the most uh, complex examples you can have with uh, this card component. And just uh, a good note generally is that all of these things you've seen in this component, you're probably going to not need all of these whenever you're using the card component. So this is structured in a really nice way that you can sort of pick and choose what it is you want. If you just need a basic image that has a little expand button at the bottom, you can pretty much just take all of that, leave out the, you know, the card content and the header and just make your card um, exactly what it is now, but minus those few components. So these examples are really good. And I really like the way Matilio structures it in sort of building blocks. Nothing is really too too nested to the point where they depend on each other. Um, 
The only other thing you really have to know uh, about um, the card components is the props to each one of the components. So let's go over uh, just a couple of important ones on each one. So on the card component itself, this is pretty much um, the one we saw earlier that uh, controls sort of the background of everything. And if we go back here, we can see that um, on the actual card itself, we have a variant outlined over here. Um, and it's sort of weird, they don't actually have that variant prop listed uh, within the actual card API, um, but that's probably the one you're gonna be using the most. Um, if you pass in this raise component, all it's pretty much gonna do is gonna add a bit of box shadow or make it uh, the card a bit lighter or darker, depending on what theme you're using with Matola UI. The next thing we have is the card actions area. This is just something you might wrap around the card action sometimes. I don't see this being used too much so I wouldn't worry too much about it probably in really specific cases to add specific paddings but as you can see if we go back to uh, some of the examples they have here um, you can see that they never really wrap their card actions in the card action area so don't worry too much about that then we have the card actions API this is just going to be sort of um, inherently uh, importing things from the Mutual UI library for the component itself that will structure different icons and stuff like that. So there's not too much props to pass in. Of course, all of these have the default SX prop, which you can use to style things. And I have another video on that. You can check it out in the description. Um, and then you have the card action, which of course you can only really control the SX prop and as well as the component type. Uh, so for example, if you didn't just want to have it to be a div, for whatever reason, you might have it to be a custom box component or anything like that. Like that you can pass in a specific component and we saw that you can do the same thing with the component uh the card media um and in the card media, you can pass in either the image, which is sort of a string that uh, that goes to whatever image, or the source. So, for example, um, you know, if you have uh, an iframe or a video or anything like that, you can pass those values in to specify what you want it to be, as well as the component. And finally, we have the card header API. Again. This one is a bit different because they allow you to pass in the specific components instead of passing them in as children. So for example, if you have an avatar, you're gonna be passing that component into the prop and not the actual component itself. Same thing with the subheader, the title, and of course, um, where was it? The, um, the action, which was, as we saw, the right side with the icon. So I hope that was a good explanation of the card component. It is sort of a bit complex at first, but once you break it down like we did, you can see that everything's just sort of a bunch of building blocks and you can just pick and choose what it is you want. And behind the scenes, nothing is really that complicated. You just sort of pass everything in and they sort of take care of the rest. The only downside is it's a bit hard to fully customize if you had a completely different design, but chances are if you're doing something in a enterprise setting or in a business setting uh, where your UX designer is using Material UI, they will probably be using the Material UI Figma or uh, you know um, sketch design package, which will have the default card layouts um, already transposed in. So a lot of the times if you're doing this sort of in a work environment, you won't have to worry about um, transfiguring this into something weird too much. But that's pretty much it. I hope you found value and don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment. It helps so much with the YouTube algorithm and I'll see you guys in the next video.